Professor O'Kane here. I had the opportunity to interview Matteo Mancuso, the Sicilian fusion virtuoso. It was just really one of my favorite interviews. When I saw that he just played Giant Steps, I thought to myself, yeah, we're doing a Reacts video on this and we're going to learn a ton of stuff off of this solo. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so just like Matteo, I have my fret wrap and that's probably the only thing I'm going to have in common with Matteo in this video. Okay, so all of that space is a breath of fresh air. Usually when we hear people play over giant steps, mm -hmm. it's the one, two, three, five thing. For those of you who don't know, the one, two, three, five is doing the first, second, third, and fifth degree of every card. So for giant steps, it would sound like. A lot of times, traditionally, that's the way improvisation over that tune is taught. And it's great to hear Matteo take a modern approach to it. And of course, when you combine overdrive and whammy bar, it's going to sound like Scott Henderson. <laughs> that's not a bad guy to pull from. I mean, if we're talking about fusion playing, you want to go to the tree trunk. <laughs> Now that's a really nice line in the key of G and it starts with an A minor 7 arpeggio and it goes It voice leads right to the major 7th G and that's an F sharp. It sounds green to me. I, I hear these things in color sometimes. Okay, so that double timeline tells me we're in for it. And because if you can double time over this tempo, if you can play double time over this tempo, you have a lot of technique. This is one of those in between tempos where eighth notes are, you know, they're doable. Triplets, those, they're also doable. Double time, you're gonna have to have a lot of facility together. And of course, we all know Matteo does. It's also foreshadowing what's coming up. Now, there we have a really, really great cliche. And when I say cliche, I'm not, I don't mean it in the negative sense. I mean it as part of describing the jazz language. So we have this really nice line, this pattern. That's a great line over E flat major seven, and it's a common enough line in the bebop language. And the way Matteo plays it, he fusionizes it, and it's great to hear. You can tell one thing about Matteo's playing is that Matteo has done his work. It's nice to hear a guitar player, especially a fusion guitar player, who has really studied jazz because it separates them from the other modern fusion players that sound like they've only kind of dabbled in jazz. Now that is a great line. I'll skip the bar for right now. And down a major six and the triad. It shows us that you don't have to follow the direction of the cards to make great lines. It does create a little bit of tension as it, they go downwards and you go upwards. Okay, so there's a really great line over the 2-5 to G major. Most of that line is over the D7 chord. He's not really playing so much A minor 7 as he is playing D7. Blazing 
and he just absolutely slaughters those two five two two fives with one fell swoop and that line goes like this and, and it starts with oddly enough the a one two three five pattern <laughs> One of the cool things about this line, it teaches us that one, two, three, five from the flat seventh of C sharp minor seven is a really cool thing to use. There's not a ton of altered in here. It's just that there's a lot of chromatic passing tones placed in the right spot. That is a key right there because a lot of people don't place the chromatic passing tones in the right spot and it sounds weird it just sounds weird it sounds like yeah let's just leave it at weird now we're coming into the two five over e flat what's really cool are these there's actually three triads that descend in whole steps this triad is part of a minor seven arpeggio Beautiful bebop shapes, and it just sounds great with a little bit of drive on it. There you hear more one, two, three, fives. More motivi. Now I'm starting to feel it's getting a little bit more modern sounding. And there you have it, it is. So he's kind of keeping a little bit of the bebop, uh, bebop architecture, but he's ending with some modern sounds. Okay, and whenever you hear a guy with mildly overdrive sound that does, like those are the kind of Mike Brecker, tip of the old hat kind of things. And um, yeah, I got you, Matteo. There's so much to learn from this solo and there are so many stepping stones here that you can use to push your playing to a level above where you're at. I know that it's done that for me, especially to try and get some of that stuff up to tempo was just, yeah, it was really, really tough. Guys, I hope you learned something from this and you take some time to look at the transcription and get some of the stuff under your fingers. Matteo, thanks so much for playing such a burning burning solo if you enjoyed this please write it in the comments i would love to get some feedback from me and see if this is the kind of thing that you want more of because i really like making this kind of stuff and i really enjoy having ye as part of it okay so until next time guys see you later <laughs>